Hey everyone, I hope you're having a good day and are ready to dive into the second hermetic principle of the Kabbalion or the second law of the seven universal laws as it's called. I think it has so many different names, but we're always talking about the same stuff. And my idea as usual is to simplify this for practical purposes. So how we can see this manifested in our reality, which is really what all these teachings and esoteric knowledge should be aimed towards. So again, this is the second law and I think is probably uh, the second, yeah, most important. I think the rest are just um, random, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't think there's, there's much importance. And the really importance that I attribute to it is that it has a way to describe that everything actually is, um, it's a holographic nature of reality. Everything really is, everything contains everything. And, you know, once that we know that the creation, as you endure with me the first, possibly <laughs> the first video with mentalism and consciousness in general, once we come out of the abstract and we know that there is a creation, then it's a lot easier for us to digest that the whole creation contains itself in it and in every fraction of it. So that's why it's fractalized. That's why everything can be fractalized. And it's, a ho it's holographic in nature. That's what the universe is. So the law of correspondence is talking about that stuff. And there is a couple of things that we can see in our, um, in our life, in our world in our universe, the, the observable universe, the physical universe that alludes to this or shows this principle. So uh, just to cover what the Kabbalion says is that this principle, uh, the principles apply to all planes. That, that's one of the things that it's kind of emphasized in the Kabbalion, that um, all principles of obviously mentalism, vibration, rhythm and so on, all of them apply to different planes of existence. And uh, I have to say that the Kabbalion doesn't cover really well the planes of existence. So I was left a little bit um, incomplete as I like to, uh, to go thoroughly. So, you know, it does explain, in essence, they divide, uh, you know, the physical plane, the mental plane, the spiritual plane. We know that as, as body, mind and spirit, which Again, you can see that even though we're talking about higher planes, we can already see the level of correspondence. We do live in the physical uh, plane, but the, does that mean that we don't have a mind and a spirit? Well, obviously not. So you can see the law of correspondence there, as above, so below. That's the, that's the biggest uh, phrase that comes out, you know, from the Hermetic teachings, talking about the law of correspondence. So as above in higher planes, so below, we have a fractalized uh, version of this. And you guys who follow me in the law of one would know that the seven densities, which cover basically the whole creation in that regard, or at least the octave of creation that we're in, is the same thing as the seven chakras, you know, and each of our chakras or energy centers has seven sub densities uh, and seven well, this would be seven sub-sub densities. So, you know, it's always the same thing repeated over and over. And even in the Kabbalion, they tell you that, you know, the body, mind, and spirit, which are the great planes, are divided into seven, of course. So the physical, say, us, we have seven. We go a little bit deeper in the law of one, and that's why I would like to stick with that model, as opposed to go with this one, which, again, in the Kabbalion is incomplete. Maybe there's more, more information in the Emerald Tablets of Toth, but I'm not sure. Uh, in any case, if we're talking about the same stuff, might as well stick with the one that we know so far. So uh, why go uh, deeper into something else? Just for validation, I guess. But you see then, uh, they do say that these seven uh, subplanes that are part, say, the physical, they also have seven which we would call sub, uh, sub sub planes. Just like I said, you know, our chakras have seven you know, sub planes or sub chakras. So you can already see the law of correspondence in work or at work here because 
Everything is just like I have down here, repeated patterns, because it's the same pattern over and over again. I heard it from Scott Mandelker, something that it really illustrates, you know, the, the way things are, like there, there's a pattern he talks about, which is one, two, uh, is it three, three and seven, I believe. So, you know, one is unity, two is polarity or duality. Then uh, three is the Trinity, which is, you know, when we have the, uh, the father, mother and son or, you know, uh, the divine uh, masculine, the divine feminine and, you know, the, the creation, which is really what comes out of that which is us, you know, it's everything actually. <laughs> so that's the Trinity. You know, we have it as the three creative principles also in the law of one with love, light, and free will. And then seven is just the subplanes that we have, which again, in the Kabbalion, they talk about it too. So uh, this is a pattern that we can see everywhere. You know, unity is in everything. Like if everything contains everything, then that's unity. You are unity already by that definition. You know, duality is expressed in the whole creation. Well, we know that up to six density where we're getting into the portal to uh, intelligent infinity or um, non-duality. But it is expressed everywhere else. You know, Trinity is how everything is created in seven. And again, it's just the planes of existence in all its different uh, categories. So the repeated patterns can be seen that way. And I mean, we can go on talking about repeated patterns, even in nature, you know, when we see the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can get the point there. I don't wanna expand too much there. Uh, this principle is just to get the idea that everything is actually um, a reflection of everything else. There is, um, uh, in, in early Zen Buddhism, this was Mahayana Buddhism at the time, uh, there was this, this idea of the, the network, the, the jewel of, of Indra's uh, network. And not network, net. The net uh, of jewels of Indra. And it really stated just that every jewel reflected the other and it contained the others in, in infinity. So all jewels reflected each other and just just another holographic reference to how everything, and we're talking about this probably 1300 years ago or so. So over a thousand years we knew this, and I mean the hermetic principles come from thousands and thousands of years. Um, so, I mean, we probably know this since Atlantis, so we're talking about more than 10,000 years and so on. So, in any case, we just see that the patterns are repeated. Now another cool thing that is worth mentioning is geometry. Geometry is the, what we call sacred geometry, everything basically derives from the platonic solids, which, you know, there's, there's even some research and some thinking that it wasn't Plato who discovered this. It was, he, he brought it, you know, to, um, to the new civilization, but it was known way before, after some archeological digging that they found, you know, the same uh, platonic solids, all five of them, so, but in any case, you know, we're talking about geometry that has been known for thousands of years, obviously before Plato, because we have pyramids and that speaks about, you know, the sacred geometry. So geometry is repeated and restructured. If uh, you remember from one of my videos, I talk about uh, Robert Moon, a physicist in the 80s, who talked about his model of the, uh, the atom and how the, the protons had, um, it was like angles in which it rotated that resemble exactly the uh, platonic solids. So what does that mean? I mean, it's, a, it's, it's the structure, it's the base, the foundation for vibration to create everything else. And from there, we can create all possible geometries all to the point of um, advanced, uh, structures like us, which is way over uh, atoms. It's, it's in, in terms of scales, we're talking about huge, <laughs> huge arrangement of atoms. So, you know, that's, that's another uh, good way to see the law of correspondence, you know, as above, so below. We even see 
and I'll get to this uh, at the end because I think it's the most important thing for practical purposes. Analogies of atoms, for example, it, there, the law of correspondence can also be equated to analogies. Any analogy that you can uh, draw from, from one thing to the other, you can see that there is a correspondence there. And the analogies that I'll, I'll talk about here is say atoms. Atoms are known, we know that they're not, you know, the typical solar system moving, you know, uh, electrons circling around the protons, but it does show the same pattern of movement surrounding or around um, a core, which is what we see in the solar system, the galaxy, and even the cluster of galaxies. There's always something rotating around the other. So we can see as above, so below there. Uh, neurons is another one because we, um, we found that the, the, the whole universe, the way our galaxies, and I mean, it's obvious, even when we see trees, and this is why I have nature here at the end. When we see trees, we see the same network connection uh, at the roots. And even just looking at the, at the branches of the trees, we can see that it's the same uh, neurological patterns that we have, and not the same one, but it's the same structure of communication. And that's what it does. You know, that's when it has its root systems and um, the branching out and the delivery of nutrients and so on. But even in the galaxies, we can see that because the mapping that we have on the galaxies also resemble a connection in between clusters of galaxies throughout the whole observable universe, which we don't know where it ends, it doesn't end. <laughs> so, um, so far as we know, it resembles the connections of clusters, which are called clicks in neurology, which are a group of neurons that fire uh, together. There's even geometry there that they have found. So what I'm getting at is that it, the more we look into uh, nature, into science or with science, the more we see the law of correspondence everywhere. It's just the holographic nature of how things work because, you know, we see that in our computers. Our computers are repeated patterns of ones and zeros, which is, again, the two, you know, duality, you know. Um, so, um, as we see it this way, I mean, it's just, everything is reflecting the same thing. It's just that it's, it's complex and we don't often uh, check it out. You know, our thoughts are repeating patterns too. So that's a, that's a really cool stuff. Astrology and the chakras. I talked already about how the chakras relate to the seven densities and uh, everything in sub densities as well. The octaves and astrology is another one that is important because Again, as above, so below, the influence that we have on uh, the planets and the stars, they, they, they do make a change and uh, kind of shape the person. This is why, you know, true astrology, when, you know, it's divested from all the nonsense, it does give you a really good indication of, you know, who you are. You know, it's not going to describe your future at all, but it's going to describe the imprint that you had this is nothing esoteric you know there is uh, it's pretty exoteric you know at this point there is influence by everything that is around you you know and you are a product of influence so we can see that too now finally to wrap up the law of correspondence as within so without is the best way i can describe this to give you the um the practical way to see how this works. This is another way of saying as above, so below. But instead of looking at some higher and lower planes and where are we, we know that we have an inside and we have an outside. The inside is our thoughts, it's our mind, which we learn in the first principle, mentalism is everything. So as within in your mind, so without. This is why, depending on your point of view, your life is going to reflect something different. And this is why when you have major changes in your life, all of a sudden you feel like you have a new life, but it's not. You have the same life, only that you're looking at it in a different way. Um, it's important, sometimes it happens that as without, so within, when you are forced to a change, you, know, you move, uh, 
uh, you are fired from your job, you know, you're just surrounded by a, diff by a different environment, then you see that you change internally because there is no, no, no alternative. You have to change. And so it, it's the, the practical part of this is that you are your mind. You know, the, the manifested portion of you is your mind. And uh, you're not your mind, actually, you are consciousness. But talking about practical purposes, we are saying that you, the mind, the mind that is reflecting out here is what you can, uh, it's your free will. Your free will decides what the mind thinks and what the mind sees. So this is the best way to see the law of correspondence in our nature. Because everything else just seems like, all right, yeah, that's fine. You know, that's all physics, that's metaphysics, that's uh, whatever, astrology. How does that work for me? Well, again, bringing back mentalism, and as we go through the different laws, that's what I want to create in congruency. How every one of them are tied in together and how that changes you. Or you can use, because the, the word that they use in the Kibbalion is that you get the master key. You're not getting information here that it's going to be applicable right away, you know, for some sort of experiment or something. But you are getting information, which is, for sure, the key for you to unlock the doors of, you know, the temple. That they call, I forgot what they call it, the divine temple, or your mind, basically, you know. So, um, as within, so without. And you have to pay attention to what's going on in your mind. Your free will is the key thing here to change your reality, because you decide what to feel about the situation. It's, um, this is a little deep, but it's important to mention here, you are not making decisions so as to blame yourself. You're not, I did not decide to write, to, um, to record this video. I didn't, it was a subconscious act. Everything is a subconscious act, and your conscious act, which is free will, is how you feel about it. And as you change the feeling that you have about it, you know, maybe at the beginning, uh, a year and change ago, I was nervous, you know, doing a video, but I went through it and I did it. And now, you know, things have changed because now I'm just used to it and now uh, it just flows. So that was my decision. See, it's the free will that makes the within change the without. And obviously, you know, the, everything that you surround and you attract because you're going to attract that is going to change you more in and it just keeps vibrating that way. There's a rhythm going on here as well, which we'll talk about in the law of um, probably the sixth law, I think it is, or the fifth, we'll get to that. So as I promised, this being the end of this second law, we're gonna bring again our friend, the wave, because I promise that you will see it throughout and it'll explain it again. Again, we have a wave going up and down and this is quite simple. As above, so below. So everything that you are creating in vibration is corresponding in the ups and downs that that will bring in your thoughts, let's say. So as you create, and as I said, as within, so without, as you manifest in your mind thoughts, those thoughts will have a vibration and that vibration, you can just see that is going to attract the equal type of vibration. You're going to be resonating with that. So the wave here just helps us explain that, you know, that as you vibrate, so you will attract that vibration. And it depends on you, of course. Um, the, the video, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not intended to cover like how you can, the law of attraction is very, it's like, it's key here because we're talking about changing your vibration to, uh, to attract things. But just know that you're already attracting everything that you are because as you are within, so is without. And so um, this is all I got for the law of correspondence. And I believe the next one would be polarity, maybe wrong, 
we'll see uh, I got to review <laughs> what we have but that's it that's the second law of the hermetic principles the law of correspondence hope you liked it I'll see you in the next video